this is probably where our shapes and bond angles start getting a little bit more complicated because we have to start thinking in three dimensions which is hard for our brain to imagine so when we've got four regions of electron density in three dimensions the the way that these can repel each other most evenly is to have a bond angle of 109.5 degrees. So what we've got is these two regions of electron density are sitting flat on the whiteboard or on the page. This one is actually disappearing into the whiteboard or into the page a little bit, and this one is coming out. The best way to demonstrate this would be to get something like a marshmallow and four toothpicks. Stick those toothpicks into the marshmallow and try to get the tips of those toothpicks as far apart from each other as you possibly can. Instinctively, you go one up, one down, one left, and one right. But actually, in three dimensions, they can get further away from each other. So that's the challenge for you, is to try to, try to do that. And if you've got some marshmallows or any soft lollies at home and some toothpicks, then that's something you could do um, there. When we get back to school, it is an activity I want us to do um, so... Hopefully we'll be back at school soon enough that it'll be still relevant learning. So this shape is called a tetrahedron. Four-sided, three-dimensional shape. Every face of that shape is a triangle. It allows for three different shapes of molecules when we're looking around the central atom. One is, of course, tetrahedral, where each of these regions of electron density is a bonding pair. So if they're all bonding pairs, then you'd expect the bond angle to be the 109.5. And if the atoms are all identical, that is true. However, what happens if one or more of them are different? Something like CH3Cl, so chloromethane. Well, what happens is the chlorine has got a bigger electron cloud, so it pushes the hydrogens away a little bit more. So it increases the bond angle from chlorine to carbon to hydrogen, to be a little bit bigger than 109.5. And in doing so, the repulsion between the two hydrogen-carbon bonds, the neighbouring hydrogen-carbon bonds, is not as strong. So it becomes less than 109.5 degrees. The next option is something like ammonia. Now, ammonia has got a lone pair of electrons on the nitrogen. These repel even more than, say, a chlorine would. They are, there's a very strong repulsion due to a lone pair of electrons. So it pushes all of those hydrogens down a lot more. So the bond angle is going to be considerably smaller than 109.5. But because there's three of them, they still are able to sort of resist that push a little bit. So I can't remember the number off the top of my head, but I think it's around 108 degrees. Or just below 109 Whereas when we get to two regions of electron density, sorry, two bonding pairs and two lone pairs, we've now got a lot more repulsion. So water is a really good example of this. And now the bond angle is down around that 107 and a half degrees. It's, it's been pushed down quite a lot. So these two lone pairs push the two hydrogens closer together because of their repulsion. Remember, we're applying the VSEPR theory, and the R means repulsion. So these two are repelling the oxygen-hydrogen bonds even more. Notice the way I phrase that. It's repelling the bonds. It's not repelling the hydrogen atoms. It's repelling the hydrogen-oxygen bonds, getting them closer together.